Hello YouTube, today I'm sharing with you the Sky Face Set by Sonia G. This is her newest series. They're made in Japan just like the original ones made um, with the red handles. The, all these are meant to be face brushes and I'm going to re be reviewing what I'm using them for. All of them are goat hair and you can read about the details of the different types of hair on the Beautylish website. They're all super soft, so even if you have very dry and irritable skin, I would know, I'm on Accutane, you can use these and there'll be no problem whatsoever. They're a really great investment for $270 for the set. As of right now, they're only sold in a set, but all of these brushes are different enough that none of them would feel like a duplicate in your collection. I'm going to start with the soft cheek. This is a dyed go hair. It's completely round and what some might consider a candle flame set uh, shape. You might have seen this shape before in the Wayne Goss 14, which is also made of go hair. In my opinion, the hairs on the Sonia G1 are much smoother. The ones on the Wayne Gauze have a wavy texture. I'm pretty sure that's intentional to be able to pick up powder more uh, strongly. Say you have a very hard press or a baked texture. This is the wavy will kind of scrape and pick it up. This is a silky one. So to pick up product, you kind of have to move it back and forth manually in the pan or swirl it. It's medium to soft density has a lot of bend to it. I'm pressing with moderate force. Pressing with light force, it stands out only a little bit. Pressing with heavier force, it turns into a mop. This one I really love using for bronzer because you can buff endlessly and you won't end up with patches of stronger color. It's also great for light setting powder around areas of the face if you're oily. Another brush this reminds me of is the Koyudo CO19. This one, however, is much stiffer. This one is better for things like cream blush because it's also dual fiber. But this one has a very silky texture thanks to that synthetic. And this one is just all go and very silky. Again, you can see it's about mm, medium large-ish if you press hard. But most people will be using it with a softer pressure probably. So it covers a good area of real estate. So if you like very precise blush, this brush might not be a good fit for you. The smaller one, Wayne Goss 14, might be better. Because of that blunt tip, I wouldn't use it for highlighter. Though you could if you like that sort of area sheen highlighter effect. But I like this one most for blush, bronzer and target setting powder. Fits nicely under the eye and everything. Next brush on my list, or on my list, on the waiting bar, it's the classic cheek. This is meant to be an all-purpose cheek brush. Very springy, quite dense. I don't have anything in my collection like this, surprisingly. Sonia really made a unique brush in this one. To give you an idea of what I mean, these are probably the closest cheek brushes I could find to it. The one it reminds me of most is the Koyudo, I'm blanking on the name, BP16. As you can see, kind of have that same tapered paddle shape. However, this one is much narrower, but it has the same thickness looking at it from this way. It also has that slight curve, as you can see, that's a crimp. It kind of presses the hairs all more together. So what you end up having is a very springy and quite dense cheek brush. But that taper gives you a nice flexibility and softness so that when you pat and when you swirl, the blending really just blends, it doesn't move product underneath it. Also, the hairs again on this, very silky, 
smoother than the ones on the BP-16, in fact. Shape-wise, here's the Hakuhoda one. This is, let me see, the J544. Build-wise, this is probably the most similar, kind of narrow, but thick, looking at the profile. Shape is completely different, though. But it does also have that neat, very springy texture to it. This one is actually less dense than the classic cheek. Some other brushes. This is the Wayne Goss 11. Similar in thickness, difference in width. This one, again, because it doesn't have all that hair compacted into such a small space and doesn't have that rolled crimp, much less dense feeling and bouncy feeling on the face. This one is a red squirrel brush and honestly this is very closest feeling to the goat hair on this classic cheek. They're extremely smooth and I don't think anyone will have a problem using this brush on their face all day. I love this one. If these brushes get released individually, I think this classic cheek is a must get. Next up is the Master Face, a round brush made of a mixture of dyed goat hair and undyed goat hair. You, if you're familiar with Hakuhodo, you'll know they also have this sort of salt and pepper looking brush, but their black, their dark hairs are squirrel. This is dyed goat. Her rationale for dyed goat mixed with regular goat, and by her I mean Sonia G, is that the dyed goat has a different texture and a different structure, and when mixed with the undyed goat, it would give a perfect balance of smoothness, springiness, and powder pickup. I really like using this brush as an all-over. For example, with the Hourglass, this is Ethereal Light. My foundation is very glowy, sometimes too much, so I'll take down the shine by going in this pan and just buffing it all over. It's extremely soft and it blends everything very evenly, really quick, and it takes down the shine extremely efficiently. It's also quite dense. If you can see me pressing it on my skin, it bounces back right away. Fans out a decent amount, but not a lot like the first brush. This means it's also good for flicking and clearing away fallout if you do your eyeshadow first. That's how I used it this morning to do my makeup. I used it to mattify the face, and I used the loose pigment at the eye, and I just used it to clean up the glitter. What I like to do is twist as well as sweep. So I'll twist to pick up stuff, wipe it on the cloth, and then sweep any remaining out. This brush is very similar, I, in my opinion, to the Koyudo um, Saikoho Cherry Handled. This is the powder brush. It doesn't have a print on it. This one is denser. This one is springier. This was one of my favorite brushes until I got a hold of this one because it has that nice bend to it. This one is you have to use more of a light hand with it. This one is pretty brainless. So a very nice feeling brush. If you don't have any luxury powder brushes, you'll enjoy this one a lot. If you have squirrel, I wouldn't say this is a necessary one, but it beats the other goat brushes that I have in a round shape. I just picked out the Koyudo because it was the closest in size. None of them have the same give to them. Next one is the Worker Fan. This brush is really unique. I'm not able to pull anything I have like it because the Hakuhodo fans I have are either the round shape or the small ones that are super thick. 
so this one is a standalone, no comparison for this one. As you can see, it has a nice dome shape going across this way that gives you a little bit of a precise tip. Density wise, medium, but the spring back is awesome. I really just like watching the ripple effect. This brush is probably, to me, the most multi-purpose brush in the whole set, hence probably why she called it the worker fan. Not only do I use it on the face, contour, I also use it on the body, down the neck, over the collarbone, shade the neck to make it look skinnier, jaw, can get in the nose, but it's a little tricky. All the sculpting, but turned on its side, it's great for blush as well because it has that area right there. You can sweep blush on, pat it on. And then, of course, with that tip, you can also do anything that needs highlighting the cheek, top of the brow, down the nose, actually fits really great there. And it's a great body brush because it just has a very nice look. So if you're doing body makeup, sweep some glow on. And also, if you're cheating, chisel some abs. <laughs> it's just a great brush overall. This is probably my second favorite in the set after the classic cheek. So there's the classic cheek, which is great. And then there's the worker fan, which is really fun. Like. I could probably do my whole face with this brush, not including the eyes, but this brush is just awesome. Last brush in this set is the Mini Cheek. Again, it's the mixed goat hair of dyed and non-dyed. Shape-wise, similar, but this one is much looser. Whereas this one, you can audibly hear the snap. This one is more of a where this one's the boom when it springs back. This one is great for highlighter. And also for contour, because you can really get in there and push the powder in and up. This one is perfect for sculpting through the hollows of the eye and down the nose. This brush reminds me most of the Sufu Cheek, shape-wise. Functionality and density-wise, no, this is a completely different brush. They look similar, but they're completely different animals. This is also made of squirrel. This is a nice brush to have. It's very smooth. And the functionality of it is for those who like doing details. So I know big brushes like uh, the soft cheek is not for everyone because they want their stuff to be more precise. How I used these this morning was I used this for bronzer to kind of color in the face. Through here, through here, through here. And then I use this to apply a cheek color. And then I used, whoops, come back. I used this to apply contour, shape the face. And then I use this for several different things. First, I use in my contour, contour powder for the eye socket and the nose and the temple. And then I wiped it off and used it for highlighter. If you have a good microfiber cloth, you don't need to worry about products mixing or muddying and getting contaminated and you end up with a contoury highlight. That's the great part about goat brushes and very smooth uh, haired brushes in general. They wipe clean very easily with just um, a textured microfiber cloth, kind of like this. This will help grab all the excess powder so then you can use this brush and this brush for every single function on your face. So if I were to rank my brushes from favorite to least favorite, 
you guys probably know by now, I really like my multi-function brushes. But if I had to recommend them, I would start with the Classic Cheek, just because it's such a great blush brush. Unless you have very large cheeks or you really need to get your blush done fast, this would be my go-to recommendation. You can use it for contour. Highlight would get a little trickier. I would pinch it to be able to get in there the way I wanted to. But a great brush that I'm pretty sure everybody will love. Second favorite, this one. It looks weird, unfamiliar shape, but don't be afraid of it. Just start using it with every single product you have and you'll find a way that you love using it and you might just love using it for everything. Third favorite would be the soft cheek. I usually like the small brushes which are more versatile, but this one just feels so nice on the face. And plus, almost everybody wears blush, right? This one's a little too small for blush, which is why I would choose the soft cheek over the mini cheek. The mini cheek is good for details. This is a great detail brush along with the worker fan. And then the largest brush. This does feel very nice, but I feel like its use would be limited for most people because I would actually use this brush for bronzer and this brush for bronzer before I use this brush for bronzer. This brush is pretty much a setting powder and a finishing brush for me. So by finishing, I mean after I have all my makeup on and I do a uh, spray, I might go over with a final dusting of some sort of light diffusing powder or optical powder and just polish everything up. So even this is a very nice powder brush to have, but most people I feel won't get full use out of it every day. So there we go. These are my favorites in order. The classic cheek, the worker fan, the soft cheek, the mini cheek, and the master face. All of them are fantastic brushes, super soft and silky. I if you're thinking of even getting three of the brushes in this set, just get the set. You'll end up loving and using every single brush. They are among the softest of the goat hair brushes in my collection. The only ones that compare in consistency are Hakuhodo and actually the NARS brushes. I have a couple of the NARS cheek brushes and the hair is on. Uh, those brushes also are goat hair and they tend to be very silky straight and quite dense, kind of like this one, actually more dense. And in Hakuhodo, they just do a great, great goat hair brush. So that's it. I hope this review and was helpful and I hope that me putting the brushes all over my face gave you some ideas on how to use them if you already have them or kind of acts as a tutorial for you if you got the brushes and are kind of at an impasse of what to do with them. Before I end the video, I'm just going to show you the handles. They are absolutely gorgeous. They have this sort of light shifting lacquer over them that goes from green to blue to almost purple. The finishing on them, impeccable. Seamless all the way through. There's some brushes by less reputable companies that have like a mark of poor workmanship is connection. Everything is very nicely machined. Sonia's logo. And what I love most, the name of the brush is printed on there. There are some brushes I have where I have to go digging through the internet to find, or digging through the internet, digging through my online orders to figure out what the name is. These are nicely printed on there. And yeah, everything about them is just well made as you would expect from a brush fanatic. As you can see, I really like this brush. They clean very, very easily. So even though this brush is stained right now, it's because I was using it with blush 
and then I wiped it on the cloth. This comes out very easily with soap and water. I use a Beauty Blender solid cleanser and it just falls off. The brush that I think, yeah, the brush that I think I like the most would be this one, this one, and oh, this is hard. I do like this one, even though I ranked it last in recommendations. There's just something about the plushness of it that is super nice. So, if the brushes ever come out separately, are are able are ever available individually. I might just get backups of these three. One, two, and three. But if I was getting brushes to give to other people, it would go in this order. One, two, three, four, and five. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and enjoy your brushes.